This is an Osram LED Guardian Road Flare, and it's basically speaking, it's a waterproof light with a magnet in the back, and you can sit it onto vehicles or signs, and it has a couple of functions. It's got the static lights, and note how these LEDs here, pointing out the side, are at different angles to the others, and even in Osram's own advertising media, it shows these on a surface and they're all at random angles as well. So we'll take a wee look at that and see if that can be corrected. It's got another mode, it's got the rotating mode, that's so off, rotating, static, and then it's got a white light on top that is four 5mm white LEDs, and I'm just going to give you a quick blast. Oh yeah, see, it's quite bright, and it's very clear they're being driven quite hard. So let's take a look inside it. So I bought this unit in Maplin in Glasgow while I was over, and it's quite widely available online as well. But the price online starts about £14, but buying it in the shop it was £12.99. There are other versions of this, and I don't know who's copying who. Is it, uh, are they clones of an Osram original, or is it just Osram making, you know, making their version of another light? I'm not really sure. I will say that Osram in the past have, been, have produced some quite interesting products, and they have been ripped off rotten. So I would err on the side that maybe Osram could have been first. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, uh, let's get this out of the way and open it. So it's got the two rubber buttons in the front. It's got the one that lights the light in the front, which is very bright. Uh, and it's got the one that controls the LEDs around the side. One click turns it on with rotation. One click makes it static and then one click turns it off. On the back, it's got a fairly powerful magnet that I can easily pull the tip out my screwdriver. And uh, it's worth noting, Osram, it's called LEDSL302. And if you do a search for that on eBay, you'll find them because that is the sort of model number. And it's got these screws that go into the back and they come out quite easily. So I'll take them out. They're not captive, which is maybe not such a good thing. But having said that, um, I've already popped the lid off this out of interest. And what's interesting about it is that it's got three little mounting tangs at the side, which you, you need to get this off, because when you actually try and pull it off, it's quite tight. It actually pops out. It's got a o-ring round the side. And when you put it back in, it doesn't matter which way round you put it, as long as these tangs have, line up with these slots. When you put it in, it actually feels like it slides in quite firmly and makes a decent seal. So that's quite good. It looks as though it could actually be pretty waterproof. And I'm guessing that these screws will press down onto this rubbery material. Inside are the usual three AAA cells. It would have been nice if it had double A's in the sense that they've got extra capacity, but, you know, they fitted the triple A's in. Uh, and it's supplied with the usual... What do they... Are they alkaline? Does it say alkaline? If it doesn't say alkaline, they're not alkaline. Alkaline, it does actually say alkaline battery. Right, that's a good start. It looks like they'd be cheapy batteries they normally supply and things, but if it is alkaline, then that's a good result. It's not going to leak after you've used it for a, for a brief period of time. So they come out, and it's odd to note that they've got these plastic sleeves around the battery holders, and I reckon that's probably to reinforce them. Uh, and Maybe they've found that with an impact, the battery's popped out. And I guess that's why they're doing that, just for reinforcement. I'm not quite sure. I, I would guess that when this lid's in, it probably... Well, these little tabs will possibly press the batteries to make... Press the batteries in to make them stay in. They must have, they must have had a reason for that. Maybe it's just to reinforce it. There's an odd thing here. The reflector has a, its own little circular circuit board, but they've instead of actually building it onto the existing circuit board... They've kind of um, they've cut a circle out of the existing circuit board so they can use this already existing sort of pattern. I guess it's just so they could use a standard little circuit board in there. Well, let's take a look at these LEDs. Yep, yeah, see, this LED here is just sticking way up. And I've just pressed it, and it's gone down into its little groove, and it's stayed put. And that one's sticking up. So I think you could probably kind of calibrate these LEDs to a degree by uh, actually placing it down, looking at the beams, and just tweaking them up and down to, to get them just perfect. However, let's pop this out and take a look at the circuitry, because that's what this is all about. I would guess, it's probably going to be, I'm guess, going to guess, chip on board, little cob, 
uh, with very little circuitry in the back. I could be wrong. Maybe two chip on board. Maybe one, because uh, the light in the middle seems to be independent, but uh, maybe they're running it off a separate chip on board. Is this going to come out, or is it going to be if I to take that screw out as well? Oh, no, no. Oh, it's coming out as a one Oh, no, it's got a chip. And lots of transistors and circuitry. I'm guessing that they've just used that little round circuit board purely because uh, it does fit in with an existing product with the sort of reflector. OK, let's take a look at this chip. Is it going to have a number on it? Ah, uh, no. It's not going to have a number on it. It's completely and utterly devoid of a number, as so many of them are. That's quite annoying. So let's take a look at the circuitry. There's a common track going round all the LEDs. There's a resistor, brown, black, black, which is 10 ohms, and it's going from the outer connection of the LEDs to there, which is the positive of the batteries. The batteries are then looped all the way around, and that's the negative there, which then goes around all the transistors. OK. So there's one common 10 ohm resistor from the positive to all the LEDs, and the LEDs appear to be linked in pairs. So how many are there? There's a uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's six pairs, 12 LEDs. And each one is linked in a pair and then has its own transistor by the look of it. And each transistor has a 102 resistor, which is 102 zeros, that's 1000 ohm resistor. So yeah, every single pair of these LEDs has the transistor. So what about the what about the middle set? It's got a positive going here going through a resistor to the positive connection of the batteries. What's the resistor? 3RO. It's, it's a 3 ohm resistor. That's not very high. They must be being really pushed hard, particularly with a fresh set of uh, 4.5 volts worth of uh, alkaline cells. That would potentially pass quite a lot of current through those LEDs. They did seem extremely bright. And the negative side of that is going to a transistor again which has the 102, it's got the 1K resistor. Oh, they're actually marked 1K as well on the actual schematic. And then the negative wheels round goes straight to the battery negative. So it's all very basic, it's all very straightforward. It's a bit more complex than I was thinking. I, I was expecting a couple of blobs with the uh, just driving the LEDs directly, but uh, they've chosen separate transistors, so um, it'd be kind of interesting to connect this up to my bench power supply now and see what sort of current it takes, so let's do that. So let's connect negative to here, make sure I'm getting the right way around here. Power supply on, will we put it up to 4.5 volts? We'll emulate a fresh set of alkaline cells capable of high current. So 4.5 volts. Um, I'm going to put that there. Make sure I get this the right way around. Press the button. The middle LEDs, the blinding white LEDs, are drawing 260 milliamps. They're standard 5 millimeter LEDs. 260 milliamps. What's that? 260... 260 milliamps divided by the 4 equals 65 milliamps each. They're pushing them quite hard. Uh, what about the LEDs around the outside? So if I put them on static, it's drawing 266 uh, for all of them. 266 divided by 266 milliamps divided by 12 is about... Uh, they're driving them about 20 milliamps per LED. But what happens if I put it into the chasing mode? 
Right, OK, so they're being pushed a lot harder there. They're being given the full current, but just for a pulse duty cycle. It's showing approximately 216 milliamps, but only one pair, I'm guessing, is lit at any one time. So uh, that would be over 100 milliamps per LED at that, uh, at that level. So yeah, they're, it's, uh, it's also, at those currents, the LEDs are going to, well, the battery voltage is going to drop quite quickly. Um, uh, yes, it's going to, that makes the size the, of these cells, it means that if you've got them for a long time, it's going to get dim quite quickly. But yeah, so I'm going to put this back together and I'm going to try and align the LEDs and uh, then we'll take a look at it after I've done that. So that's it back together after a little bit of LED tweaking and yes, they can be aligned. It's just the, the kind of the way it's put together and the fact that, you know, it can nudge some LEDs at different angles. But yeah, it's all, all in all, it's actually quite an interesting little light. It's quite, seems quite well made inside and the, the hard clear plastic, this rubber layer is physically sort of, it's got holes in the hard plastic that rubber is sort of injected through and has mushroomed at the other side a little bit, so it seems like it's going to be quite a tight seal. That's also what makes the, the button area uh, waterproof as well, the fact that it's just basically a hole through the hard plastic with a little guide, and then it's uh, got the this rubber dome that pushes down the, the tactile button inside. So yes, it looks as though it could be fairly resilient, it looks as though it could withstand being dropped and water and stuff like that, so um. Once it's being tweaked for alignment, it's actually quite a nice little light.